Good afternoon. I'm here to preach the word. I'm here to rebuke, to exhort, and I'm going to do just that. And today I'm going to do a little special thing about this internet language that we have. Especially when some of you out there, you use the words wrongly by the English, and you need to press one. I'm thinking of one right now when you use the word sista. Why don't you learn how to speak English? Because the Bible mentions the word sister, not sista. Why don't you get right with the Bible language? And today I'm going to get OMG. Did you know that OMG is found in the Bible? And we're going to look at OMG. OMGs for you guys who are afraid to say the name of God is oh my God. And we're going to look at the scriptures of oh my God. And we're going to see what the scriptures say about oh my God and how you just do OMG. This sick internet language that's out there with all these, these children that can't even act their age. And no wonder English is dying because sister, oh my gee, and there's all the junk. You need to start learning the King James English because this is dying. It's being perverted because you don't want to use the words that are archaic and old and blah, 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 blah. Hey, I'm going to stand for the Bible. I'm going to stand for the King James Bible, and we're going to see what the words have to say. And where you don't use what the Bible says, you are wrong, and the Bible is correct. Let's look at OMG. Let's look at Oh My God. First of all, it's found 21 times in the Bible. How many of you use the OMG and never even knew is a Bible context in the Scriptures? And do you even know what Oh My God in the Bible reference? The first place it's found is found in 1 Corinthians 17.25. 7, 1 Corinthians 7. They probably got a perverted Bible out there. We'll probably say, I'll read. For thou, OMG, has told thy servant. If not, I just probably gave some idiot a, a new design to come up with a computer language of a Bible. And change it. It's sister. Sister. You don't even know how to talk. Let's read what the Bible has to say. For thou, O oh my God, has told thy servant that thou wilt build him a house. Therefore thy servant has found his heart to pray before thee. Now this is not an oh my God this is a tragedy. This is an oh my God. What did you just tell me? David is speaking out to the fact is that God has just promised David that he, his family is going to be forever settled. That Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is going to be in David's line. What is David? What is the line of Judah? Judah's not the firstborn. But yet God promises David the very thing, the very fact that, guess what? His house will be established. It will be built. And David says, oh my God. He doesn't use OMG. He uses it reverently. And the fact is, when you use his internet words, these internet sayings, these internet things today, you are depriving the English language that you should be happy, that you should be uh, using, that is dying in America, and you are degrading the word of God. Like I said, there's probably a Bible out there that's got all these all these things of the internet language. And it just shows how stupid you are, how lazy you are to learn the English language and get it correct. You're lazy. LOL and all that other junk. Say it out. King James 1611 Bible. Next place it's used in Ezra 9 6. Are we going to go through all these? I don't know. It's an interesting study. It's a lot better than watching TV. Ezra 6 9 6. Excuse me. 
You, can, you people got to realize you're going to be accountable to what you say and how you talk. That's what Jesus said in Matthew. You'll be held accountable for everything that comes out of your mouth. OMG. Your preachers ain't telling you that. That's why I'm telling you. I love you. I want you to do right. I want you to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I want you to get full blessings. I don't want you to see burnt up losses. And that we need to say what the Bible says. Can you picture me on the street, a street preacher? OMG! H-E-O-L! That sounds silly, doesn't it? But a lot of you are talking this language today, and you're wrong. Imagine some of you adults out there, and i got to bring you back into the English classroom again, sit you down at a desk, and reteach you English. Ezra 9, 6. And said, oh my, oh my God, I am ashamed and blessed to lift up my face to thee, my God. For our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Ezra here is, our sins are overwhelming. We are deep in our sins. We have violated you, God. We are in despair. We are in the devilishness. We are under Satan. We have sinned. We have done wrong. Oh, my God, where are we today? We have failed. Our nation was destroyed. We are sitting in Babylon. I can't even look at you, God. And I am a sinner. Our nation is a sinner. This, oh my God, unlike David saying, oh my God, what blessing you go. Ezra's crying out, oh my God, what are we in? We have done wrong. We are ashamed. We are shamefulness in front of you, God, in front of all the nations. We have done wrong, and our home is no more a home. And that we've caused the Gentiles, the heathen, to look at Jerusalem and say, Ha! Ha! And some of you don't even know what I just did and what I said because you have not read the scriptures. Ill report, ill words because of, oh my God, look at the sin that we're in. Now, what do you think Ezra get down and pray like this? Oh Lord, OMG. <laughs> Make God sick. You want me to keep going? You want me to stop? You want me to shut up? You want me to go in with the world? Or you want me to keep going? Because the next ones are going to get you hard. And God, if you don't repent, you are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And your words are going to burn up. And your words have testified to the loss that we have a deprived God. OMG. You want me to go ahead? Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah and Ezra, a man gone back after God showed him grace and mercy to go back and rebuild the temple. Rebuild the land. Allow the people to go back in the land. God didn't have to do that, but they are his people and he loves them. And he told them after a certain period of time, you will go back and you will rebuild. Ezra thir I mean, excuse me, Nehemiah 13, 14. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God for the offices thereof. Verse 22 of the same chapter. And I commanded Levites that they should cleanse themselves, that they should come and keep the gates, to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also. And spare me according to greatness and mercy. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something, Christian, that, is, that should make you weep and make you drop down your knees and ask God to forgive you and claim 1 John 1, 9. We're not done. Verse 31. And for the wood offering at the times appointed and for the first fruits, remember me, O oh my God, for good. And I missed one, verse 29. Remember them, O oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites. Four times in Nehemiah 13, Nehemiah says, O oh my God. 
It's just an OMG. Shut the book and let's go fooling around. Let's go worldly things, okay? What's wrong with a Christian saying OMG? You have denied your God. When you say OMG, you've taken God and threw him out and just put him into three little words. OMG. Where the cry is, oh my God. Nehemiah is saying not in you know not that oh my God, this has happened. Nehemiah is saying three times, four times in this chapter. You're my God. And you Christians who claim to be of Jesus Christ have reduced oh my God to OMG and where you've loved the world just to use OMG as is a common abbreviation with no meaning at all. You have reduced God to G. You are a sinner, and you need to repent. A Christian should stand up and say, God is my God. Jesus Christ is my Savior. As Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And when you reduce it to OMG, you are ashamed of the name of God. You are ashamed to say, my God. You didn't realize. That's my job to tell you when you don't realize what you're doing. You're, when, you, when you converse in the world and you live in the world and you act like the world, you think the world wants to praise God. No, the world, the world takes God and puts it in the OMG. Well, I'm here to say let's get in the Bible. Let's get with God. Let's say, oh, my God. When you say that, you spell it out. You are saying that God. You are saying, it's my God. You're saying, oh, my God. You want me to go further? You see what happens when the Christian goes in with the world? You go in the world and you, you romance with the world. You talk like the world and you begin acting like the world. And you forsake God. The Bible says, marvel not, the world hates you. God does not want you to be living and acting and talking and dressing like the world. He says, be ye separate. Come ye out of her, my people. But yet you dress, you talk, and you act just like them. And you are a terrible testimony before Jesus Christ. You are a terrible testimony among the lost people. And some of you may say, you're just too hard. We'll find out the judgment seat of Christ. I'm going to stand firm on this word. I'm going to stand firm with Jesus Christ and what the Bible says. And you suffer the loss. I've come too far to serving God and doing right to go about your way and your worldly ways and suffer loss. Everybody keeps saying press one for English, press one for English. This is press one for English. Psalm 3, 7. It gets me mad when Christians act like the world and talk like the world. Because you know what? When I try to witness to people... You are a burden. Because people like you, men who are lost, will come up and say, I know a Christian, blah, blah, blah. You become a hindrance of the gospel because you don't open the Bible and you don't read it. And then when you do read your songs or whatever, when you come up passages like this, you don't even realize what you're saying. And that's my job, to exhort, to rebuke, to teach you, to guide you to the light, to bring what is right. You know, let me tell you something about this talking like the world and all that. Let me give you a little, this didn't happen, but it's a joke. But it's, it's a poor joke. And it's the kind of joke that you should not laugh at. Now listen to me. You say, how deadly is OMG? Acting like the world. Dressing. How deadly is it? Well, let me tell you. There was a bar fight one night. Terrible bar fight. You know, bar stools being thrown. Pool balls. 
mirrors being broken up. I mean, there's just blood, broken teeth. The police come. The ambulances come. Well, there's a dead girl laying on the floor. And with all the tragic, you know, with the handcuffs and the police and the, and the paramedics and all that and stuff, here's this dead girl laying on the barroom floor, and Satan comes up and he takes her soul. Now, this didn't happen. Well, Michael pops up and says, hey, what are you doing? He says, I'm taking this soul to hell. Michael says, oh, no, you're not. Says, Listen, Michael, I I've had it with your garbage. This soul is going to hell. Now, you can't stop me. Michael says to Satan, he says, listen, now, Lord rebuke you, Satan, but you look at, you open your hand and look at that soul. The devil opens up his hand and looks at that soul and says, well, I'll be. She's God's soul. And Michael says, yep. Well, I'll tell you what, you know what? She acts just like one of mine. I thought she was mine. She walked and talked like mine, so I came and got her. That's one of those jokes that's not funny. Psalms chapter 3, verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth on the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. This, oh my God, is Lord victory. Glory to God. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You sing those kind of hymns and, and you, you, you praise God, but then you take the OMG and you have just degraded the salvation that God's giving you. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. It is God that saved me. It is, oh my God, that I base my salvation upon. It's nothing to abbreviate. It's something to proclaim that God, my God, has saved me. Psalm 22, 2. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest me not. And in the night season, and not silent. Here's a cry that someone's in trouble, like, Lord, hear me! Hear me, Lord! Lord, help! Why are your ears closed? Why ain't you helping? Lord, help! Oh my God, I'm in a fix! I need you, Lord! And when you're in times of trouble like that, you are not going to cry out, OMG! Listen, I believe when somebody's going down the road and they see an 18-wheeler coming flat at them, they're not going to cry, OMG! I guarantee, oh my God, has been a prayer of many who have died violently. Oh my God is a prayer. It is a praise. It is a title that you are my God. Why else would the world change it to three letters? Psalms 25 2. Psalms 25 2. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. This, oh my God, is I trust in you. I put my faith in you. I give you my all. Psalm 38, 21. Psalm 38, 21. I hope you'll take this and, and respectfully honor the oh my God and to realize how wonderful that these three words are. 38.25. That can't be it. Let me. 3821. Forsake me not, O Lord my God. Be not far from me. You know, if there's somebody who you do not want not to split company with you, you would not want God to split company with you. 
That God is somebody, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is somebody that you want with forever. And that's the fact is for the newborn Christian, for the, that is born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit is sealed within us. The Holy Spirit is with us for all eternity. That we're given that companion, as Jesus said, the comforter that is with us, that dwells with us, that's inside of us, that will teach us, that will bring things to remembrance, that, that oh my God, please do not not leave me do not forsake me be near me forever and ever always be my side the oh my god is an important prayer it's an important plead it is an important title it is important that you find oh my god in the bible isn't that just wonderful isn't that just great that we can see such things as, oh my God, as our prayers, as our God, as a title for the God of heaven. It is great to know God. And I'm doing a little look up here. Uh... 38, 21. I'm doing a little look up here. I am reading from the New International Version. 38, 21. Ready? Lord, do not forsake me. Be not. Do not let me tell you this again. Psalm 38, 21. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me. And I be my God. Wow. Well, isn't that interesting? Isn't that really interesting? And let me do another search. Oh, uh, how can I do the search? I want to search. I want to do a search here. I, I, work with me right here. I apologize. I want to check something out here. I want to check something out. Let me check it out real quick. Okay. Psalms 25, verse 2, I've already read to you. I'm going to read to you out of NIV. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies try. Where is the oh my God? Where is the oh my God? Let's check. Let's check some other things here. Let's check some. Uh, let's try the the New Living Translation. I trust in you, my God. Where is the oh? Imagine, imagine, imagine. You are using a perverted God, and in your internet talk, you say O M G, and your Bible does not mention O oh my. God. That is not found in perverted Bibles, my friend. So if you got a perverted Bible that is not a King James Bible, you are doing injustice to your Bible. Stop using OMG. Because it's only found in the King James Bible. Isn't that something the Lord just showed me? So when you say OMG, I'll give you credit for something. I'll give you credit, right? I will give credit that you are quoting a King James Bible. Psalms 40, verse 8. Let's go over here. I want to have fun. This is, this is fun. Oh, I know. Psalms 48. And we'll do the Good News translation on this one. Oh, lots of laughs. Ah, shoot, Psalms, Psalms 40, verse 8. Psalms 40, verse 8. I used the wrong one here. All right, Psalms 40, verse 8. We'll read the King James Bible first. Okay, Psalms 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. 
let's this is the last time we'll look at a perverted Bible. Uh, this is the Good News Translation, Psalm 40, verse 8. How I love, we, thought, we looked at three translations now. How I love to do your will, my God, I keep, well, that's it. If you don't have a King James Bible, don't use OMG. We'll get back to the text here. Psalms 40, verse 8. This, oh my God, is, I delight to do thy will, oh my God. What you're saying is, again, is the title. You're God. You're my God. I'm going to do what you want me to do and not what Satan in the world wants me to do or people. Remember Nehemiah? To use, oh my God, means God has to be your God. Oh my God, as we look at the 21 times as mentioned in the King James Bible, is capital G-O-D. It is not small G-O-D or even an S. Oh my God belongs to God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, who is my God, even though some of you out there don't believe he is God. This, this phrase, oh my God, belongs to God, belongs to Jesus, as I am his child. I am saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am to do everything according to Psalms 40 verse 8 that will please and delight and just put a smile to bless God. You think you bless God when you OMG. Well, you know, OMG is so short, I don't have to write it out. And what other things do you type out for? Huh? What will you type out for? So you, uh, that you, that you just, you know, you type out for that when it comes to God, it is three little letters. So what you are is you're being lazy for God. Verse 17 of chapter 40. But I am poor and needy. Oh, that's the church age today. Read what God has to say in Revelation chapter 3. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help, my deliverer. Make no tearing, oh my God. We're nothing without God. But you're calling upon the Lord to think upon you. You're calling for the Lord for help. You're calling for the Lord not only for help, but he's the deliverer of the help. And Lord, please don't tarry. Oh my God, help! There are some people who will say, I am poor and needy, yet the Lord will get... The welfare thinketh upon me. Thou art my help, my deliverer. Make no tarrying, oh my Obama! Or whoever's president, or whoever's in charge of the welfare system. Or whatever they're trusted in. Oh, my money. Oh, my bank. Oh, my mama. Oh, my dad. Whoever I'm trusted in. But you have God. You stand out as, oh, my God. Psalms 42, verse 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites, from the hill Mizar. This is a Jewish person crying to the Jewish God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the 12 tribes. He's calling upon God. He's remembering all that God has given him. The land that is his, the Mount Hermon. The land of the Jordan River. He's saying, you are my God. It's remarkable that in the land of Judah, in the land of Israel, they had other gods. They had Baal and Asterisk. They had fallen gods. They had evil gods. They had idolatry gods. They had a lot of gods, but they didn't have God. And this man in Psalm 42 speaks up and says, Oh my God! signifying the God of the Bible over all the other gods. Friends, Christians, have you stood up and tell people that Jesus Christ is your God? 
have you proclaimed that Jesus saves? Psalms 59 verse 1, deliver me from my enemies. Oh my God! You know, if you have small G-O-D or small G-O-D-S and your God is Satan, he ain't going to deliver you from the enemies because the enemy of Satan is God. The enemy of Satan is the born-again Christian. The enemy of Satan is the evangelist that will tell you the way, the truth, and the life. He does not want you to go into those people. He does not want you to go into the Bible. For 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says he's the God of this world. And he does not want you to have the gospel. Mark chapter 4. He will take that seed from you. But when you have the God of the Bible, you have Jesus Christ. They will deliver you from the enemies. They will deliver you from the world unless you want to live like the world and act like the world and dress like the world. You have no ambition to do right. Psalm 71 verse 4. Psalm 71 verse 4. Again, there's 21 times. 21 times is mentioned. Oh my God. Psalm 71 verse 4. Deliver me, O God. Verse 12. O God, be not far from me. Oh my God. 22. I will, I will also praise you with a sultry. Even thy truth. Oh my God. Oh my God is a cry of help. It's a cry of neediness. It's a cry upon God to step down and give me aid, deliverance. I'm in trouble. It's a it's a praise. It's oh my God. I'll get the instruments of, of the sultry. I'll sing praises to you. I will declare to the world that you are my God. I will proclaim Jesus. Oh my God. Let's go to Daniel. We'll look at the last two places. Daniel 9.18. Daniel 9.18 and 19. I hope after this, instead of being mad at me, I pray that you will think what you say. Because according to Matthew, Jesus Christ speaking, he says every word you will give an account thereof. Every word. Every single word that you have spoken, you will give an account. You realize that? Daniel 9, verse 18. O oh my God, incline thy ear and hear. Open thy eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name, Jerusalem. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken to do. Defer not for thy own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Daniel's praying, and he's saying, listen, the city has been destroyed. It has been taken over by Babylon. We are in a nation that we do not belong in. It's because of our sins, as Nehemiah, and I mean, as Ezra prayed. And Daniel is seeking God of, of the Jerusalem. He's renouncing the sins. He's calling upon the sins. He's in supplication. And he's saying, oh my God, for your namesake. Give us that land back. 
Let it be for your name that the temple gets rebuilt. Because while we're away, it's a hissing. It's a retort. It is, look at that God, what he did to their people. Daniel and Ezra, and oh my God, are praying. In Matthew 12, 36. OMG. It, sound, it did sound simple, didn't it? And I see it every day. These abbreviations. And it makes you sick because you get people turn around and say, you know, press one for English. Well, you're not speaking one for English. And then when I see God's name reduced to a G, that makes me upset. Because my God is more than a G. Now read with me in Matthew 12, 36. I'll give you a few seconds to get there, Matthew 12, 36. I'd like you to read this with me, because I like when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ that you cannot say, I never knew. Listening to this message has now made you guilty. And him that knoweth to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin, James says. You are without excuse. Matthew 12, 36. Jesus speaking. If you have a red letter Bible, this is in red. But I say unto you that every idle word, every text, everything on Facebook, everything that you say, every joke, every word that you say that did not need to be said, just to talk, to talk, your words, every word that your preacher, every word that I've said, will be what? That every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, friend, I did this outline. I'm doing this message because I don't want you to stand before Jesus Christ as a born-again sinner and have Jesus look at you and say, what? I'm just an OMG. That's all I was to you. You couldn't even spell my name out. To me, it is serious enough to spend this time for you to hear this message about what you should say and how you should say it. And I'm telling you right now, a born-again Christian should spell out what the Bible says. Oh, my God. We went through 20 or 19 verses of 21 verses. And the Bible, the King James Bible that we said, saw, said, Oh, my God. And the new perverted versions out there don't even have that. And as I said, how many of you have the new perverted versions? And you use OMG, and you are... Quoting semi from a King James Bible. Isn't that funny? That you quote a Bible that you don't believe in, but it is the very Word of God. And we see in Matthew chapter 12, every single word, even if it's not a word, if it's abbreviation, you will be held accountable. I hope this message has helped you to improve. What you need to do is you need to use the archaic words of the Bible. You need to use the King James English, the Elizabeth English of the Bible. You need to bring these words back and use them in your everyday life. And if you were to start using them, and if your church starts using them, your Christian brethren starts using them, and you use them every day, guess what? You may bring the English language back, and you will prove to these scholars that they're not archaic, but they will be everyday language. But it's too lazy today because we got to use abbreviations. we got to shorten everything up, and we don't want to take time to mention God fully. But let me tell you right now, let me close with this. 
God is my God. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I am not ashamed to mention that Jesus saves. That Jesus saved me in April 1987. I am a born again Christian by God, by Jesus Christ. And I have the Holy Spirit indwelling inside me. I am saved forever. I couldn't lose it because it's not mine to lose. I'll praise Jehovah, God of the King James 1611 Bible. As my Savior, as my fortress, as my rock, as my salvation. And there is no other. Oh my God.